Um, Jody might be late if she comes at all. Uh, she's not she's her daughter's present tomorrow. Well, we're going to One, we need to solicit for more volunteers. I think it's time we start asking for our, uh, fun people <laughs> who would like to help out. Um, we should start doing that, and we should take a look even at the alternate list and see who's on there, because even the alternates are not um, showing, participating. I, I know so. there's one that we haven't seen over a year. So. Yeah. And we did have a resignation, so I don't know if that was just that we were down to eight on the schedule. So who appoints? Do you guys appoint? Or does that go to the floor slot? It goes to the floor slot. Do we submit a list? Of and then we approve it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, today what I would really like to concentrate on are just those four buckets that I mentioned in the agenda. We go, it, it's kind of hard not having Janessa here. Because she's you know, a huge part of it. But I mean, maybe amongst us four, we can start taking a look at things that so I kind of categorize them into buckets of worked and don't change. What is that? Uh, so let me back up. So it went well, better than expected. So there's one bucket, right? Another bucket would be went long, more di more difficult than anticipated. Uh, the other one would be continue to do because it works, which we can probably come up with a lot of those, and stop doing because it doesn't work. Right now. No, it's one is completely slow, you don't have to actually go to the other one. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, if you're thinking it's a success, you don't have to go to any work, right? I mean, so yes. just dump it, start at one, and just see what's going on. I think so. So maybe we'll just start at the very beginning. So what went well and better than expected? So I can jump in and say that. So I have a love-hate relationship with sports engine. Mm -hmm. I hated it to the nth degree when we first started it. I see the value in it. So what went better than expected for me in terms of sports engine is, is the fact that people used it. Because I highly anticipated that people were not going to use it because of the processing fees. The processing fees were too high. you kind of mentioned, I mean, you had several Five. children. Yeah, so pros and cons to that. Sure. Is there something that you can do to modify it that you don't have a processing Like say if you gave it three and you get two for you know two. I mean you have to pay the right the rec thing, but right. you have to pay the processing fee. But we're at the mercy of sports engine. So we don't know if there's those options that you could do. It wouldn't we be able to not for this year. Wasn't there a negotiation that could possibly happen? Wasn't that something that was set up like at the end of using them the first year? I mean I know you've right. had correspondence with them. I've been I've been stepped back from sports engine, but right. I can just tell you, I had my hair cut by a person today who brought her son to Camp Rally, and um, she, she only had one kid, and she said that she goes, I loved, so I asked her, I'm like, hey, what was your experience? She goes, loved camp this year, loved it. I said, and then I said something, like, what was anything that you want to tell us that we need, you know, work on or whatever? And she said, um, love the online, but... Same, same thing. She said, I think for my one kid, I paid $13 in processing fees. She goes, I was lazy because they really didn't want to do the hand stuff. But she's like, yeah, that was a lot. So, okay, so I'm throwing it out there because I'm not sure what the restrictions are. But what about GoFundMe? Um, or another alternative. Like, if there's to... another al an alternative. But GoFundMe has a, a small percentage that they take. So it wouldn't charge the people. You could increase the thing by that amount. I forget what it is. It's like six or eight percent of the total. It's not very much, anyway. So, and then you can have the checks dispersed weekly or monthly to the town hall directly. That's an option, but we also want something that's going to be able to capture the data, like Sports Engine did. And one thing that we did talk about. Yeah, is I don't think that. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I, just finished sure. I just don't think that GoFundMe has that capability to actually act like a camp or a rostering or... And that's what this does. That's exactly okay. what this person does. Okay. Right. Um, we also know, Kelly and I, 
have had experience in the past with Rosso. I don't know what Rosso's using this year, but what they used the year before wasn't bad. I mean, right. But I don't recall what the processing fees were. I just I just signed my kids up for that, so now I'm trying to remember. Um, as far as sports, I didn't know what, when I went to them about the processing fees. Their reply to me was, "We can't change that. It's you pretty much going to find that no matter where you go. But what we can do is um, the processing fee that occurs every year." we can reduce the processing fee next year. So we may be good with the processing fee, but so what I'm going to be interested to find out is when this parent survey goes out and one of the questions is specifically going to be about the registration process, mm -hmm. I'm interested to see how many people say the processing fees were too high or even Sports Engine itself wasn't as user-friendly as it probably could be mm -hmm. because yeah. it was very redundant mm -hmm. and it took a long time. Poor Kelly, I mean. <laughs> um, but... Okay, so, um, sorry, Nelson, Jane, go. go ahead. I like the opportunity that we took with Sports Engine, and I like that we used it and saw what it can provide us. So I really like the online. Mm -hmm. But I think we need to keep Sports Engine in mind, but explore something maybe a little bit different that might have lower processing fees, right. that the reporting, getting reporting out of Sports Engine isn't there, um, getting to how many campers do we have for the first week? I mean, mm -hmm. thank God for Jody because Jody did it, mm -hmm. but it's not that easy. Mm -hmm. You have to filter, you have to sort, and you mm -hmm. really shouldn't have to do that mm -hmm. on something that's. I don't think that sports engine was made for something this comprehensive. So it was it was something that you signed up for, and then you also indicated the week that you were going to be there or not be there, right? Mm -hmm. So that gives you a, a, re a report option. Yeah. And then what else does it give you that for reporting that you needed? Need to know. Uh, financials, um, we want to know what kids going to be there when. We want to know um, who wants post, who wants pre. Okay. We want to be able to sort out an infinite amount of data. I want to be able to pull a report on the towns. I want to be able to re pull a report on um, what family has, how many kids. I mean, there's a lot of data there that, from my perspective, from what, what I'm doing, it, it, it's just okay. invaluable to me. So when you, going back to you and all those processes, was it by student, uh, by child, or was it by what you were doing, like pre-care, post-care? Yeah, I think what Jody, what did Jody say? Well, see, I I bailed, so I did a I, I did a pretend one, uh -huh. <laughs> and then I bailed, and I did a handwritten one, so that I wouldn't have to pay all of them. It was so. <laughs> per transaction, three yes. percent per transaction. I said it was my son. So three percent, but a tra transaction is one child, one child. One activity. So if you sign them up for Camp Raleigh for all eight weeks, that's one transaction. Pre care is another transaction. Another transaction. See, that's but what I was also, getting at. Oh, okay. Also, charges you if you do the payment plan, yeah. you're going to get hit with a fee, processing fee, every single oh, time so you do a payment plan. They pay so much. Yeah, so you're better off paying upfront. the upfront, pay everything upfront, which is good for us. That's yep. great. And yep. we want an incentive to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. But we just felt the amount of processing fees was just. A little too much. Mm -hmm. And like me, I signed up for three individual weeks, and I think that was three different transactions because it was not a whole summer. Yeah. summer. Yeah. It was three. So you had to log him in for three different times, which could give you that processing fee. Yeah. That doesn't seem right. The but other thing we realized that happened, this is just a couple of weeks ago, we realized this was whenever there was a change. So we had, so let's just, I'm going to use Kelly for an example. So Kelly signed up for five kids. So Kelly then decides, ooh, you know what, I really think I want post-care. So we, you can go in and do and add in your post-care, mm -hmm. but what it doesn't do is make the financial changes. So now Kelly owes another $160, let's just say. It has to be a separate transaction. So you actually have to go into this separate system and say, okay, well, this is so-and-so just added this, and it bills them separately, but it never never ever ever changes the financials so when i so essentially in the end when i'm providing caroline this report and we're mm -hmm. trying to cross our t's and dot mm -hmm. our i's mm -hmm. she's going to get two separate reports because now i've got this group of invoice separately and i've got this group of all the regular original uh, registrations and that and it could be the same person's on both reports is what you're saying yeah and, and that was yeah. a hiccup for team camp when we decided to add 
creating a post for Teen. It's like yeah. I asked Jody for all the invoices for Teen Campers so I could figure out like how much our income was, and I still don't know how much pre and post care was because it wasn't on. She printed me all the invoices, but it didn't come up. Yeah. Pre or post care. So because it was added in after they had registered, it didn't show up on the invoice. So any reports I run for Caroline based off the original sports engine registrations, it's gonna be short, they're going to be right? inaccurate. It's yeah. not going to be right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, and I actually called. I was on uh, the phone with somebody from the sports engine for quite a while to figure out what the heck am I doing or not doing. Mm -hmm. And he said, no, it's just that it doesn't talk to each other. And I thought, well, that's the, the silliest thing I've ever heard. Yeah, yeah. And he said, no, that's just the way it is. So as we're looking at sports <laughs> engine, um, going forward, I, we're not going to have a resolution to it today, obviously. Right. No. But um, going forward, I think it's something that we need to actually think about. Because mm -hmm. um, as a parent, if I'm adding pre-care, um, you know what would be really nice is if I'm on an installment plan, if it just refigures the right. installment plans going forward. Right. Um, and if as an option. Yeah. You know, and not have, because now it's going to be a billing nightmare when I go to finish up all this paperwork at the end of the month for Caroline, it's going to be a nightmare. I think it, it also needs to be clear because there was some confusion that came out. Um, and just that's what my job to talk about this, but I saw on the Facebook group about people being confused why they're still being charged. We even and had a parent come up to us on the last day and he like went to go hand us money and we were like, you don't owe us anything. And he was like, what? so funny because I've heard this a couple times, but yeah, I swear I've only gotten one question <laughs> from any parent about any. There, been a, there were a couple on Facebook. Let's see what they said. Yeah. Um, so we actually just started, we're starting with Sports Engine first. Um, we're actually, what we are starting with is the bucket of what went well and better than expected. Yeah. And obviously we'll continue to do. So um, we started with Sports Engine and we understand that part, there's things about Sports Engine that we found to be valuable. Mm -hmm. There's other parts of it that are not. Right. So obviously we're not going to come up with a solution, but we're today. But it might be on the table to take a look at something different. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So from your perspective, as far as Sports Engine, was there anything about it that was really good for you, being the director and the assistant director, or is there, is there stuff that just really went horrible with it? Um, one complaint I have about it is like when we went to go print off all of our um, like contact information for emergency contacts and stuff like that, none of our or pick up lists stuff like that, none of the parents were on it. So like when it was entered into the system, like obviously they entered themselves in, but when it was printed off, like as who can legally pick up the kid, mm -hmm. no um, mom nor dad were ever on that list. So I don't know. And it's very strange, very mm. strange. And that list is from the sports engine. Yeah. Okay. Because it's like they I believe so, right? Yeah, because we had to enter it, and that right. we, re, it was redundancy. And you have to, I had to enter it a couple times. Yeah. 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 Mom nor dad were ever on the the lists. It was very strange. So when the so you went into filter <coughs> and asked to get the. Mm -hmm. And then once you go once you go into filter and you see. Like, you can pick parent one, parent two, mm -hmm. and then, like, phone numbers and stuff like that. But if you were to pick up, if you were to do, like, the emergency contacts, stuff like that, mm -hmm. those, mom and dad were never on those lists. God, that's so weird. Hmm. It's very But weird. they were when you did parent one and parent two. Yeah. Okay. I would think you'd go to the emergency more so than you would do right. parent one or two. Right. So, like, we had, not be parents. we had yeah. lists yeah. upon lists of, like, who can pick up kids and, and their phone numbers next to it. Mm -hmm. But... Like, for example, when a kid were to get hurt, you would have to go into Sports Engine, click Parent 1, Parent 2, click their phone number, and then call them. Whereas, like, for a grandparent, you can literally just look at the list and be like, all right, there's their phone number. Mm. So, like, if we didn't have access to the internet, we would have never had mom or dad's. I mean, well, it's an, it's an important one. Yeah. Other than that, I felt like it was 
they need to know because they were all over the different like fields that you could check off and everything. I wonder, did it ever, I have a couple of, um, I thought I did already, um, order entry orders. Did it ever print on the entry orders you know? I have no idea. Okay, I'd have to double check that. Because when you print those, all the information as input should be on there. But I'll go back and look at that at some point. But that's, um, yeah, that's a good point. It's just important. And uh, my understanding, and people can correct me if I'm wrong, is that the processing fee was handed up to the parents because we did not want to pay it as a community in the order of time. Exactly. You mean sports engine? Yes. Yeah, it was all on the parent, wasn't it? Yeah, that's definitely. Because we didn't want to pick up the processing fee as an organization. Oh, no, I went. Yeah. I mean, as a parent, I'm even signing my child up, I wouldn't, I guess, for me, anyways, I wouldn't expect the town to pick up my processing fee if I choose to do the online registration, you know? The other thing I wonder, you know, could we possibly make thought about our registration, you know, our registration fee, could that be a processing fee as a part of the processing fee? I don't, I don't even know if we want to get into that. Yeah. That's just me, though. I mean, because that's just another thing that we have to keep track of. Right. I think if we do stick with them, we should try to negotiate the negotiate, you know, uh, the processing fee. You know, try to see if we can get that lowered. Or right. by or by family. family. Like, our processing fee per family. Yeah. Not just per per everything. Right, right. <laughs> I mean, or, or even by child. Right. Before an aftercare and the, the plan, I mean, you shouldn't have to pay three processing fees to be right. doing three different things for that one child. So right. I think we need to really give they can't then look for something that can do that because I think that is ridiculous. Oh my God, it's terrible. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Especially <laughs> cultural children as well. I, I get it. I understand yeah. what, they're, what they're talking about. But yeah, I don't think registration fees, that's just, that just pops up a lot of other stuff that. Right. I saw on the invoices that I got from Jody was that the teen campers, even though they were waived, um, we had nine or ten teen campers, but family members in other camps, either in teen camp or Camp Raleigh, so they paid the $40, which was higher for Camp Raleigh registration fee, and then fee was waived. It still charged them at the end a $30, well, it didn't charge them, it was part of their subtotal, $30 registration fee on the when the sports engine printed so when Jody handed us the the I guess would be invoice right from yeah. all the team campers it actually looked like we had more money in our pocket because it it automatically gave each each team camper a thirty dollar plus Yes. But you didn't get it, but they didn't get charged. Right. They didn't get charged. But they didn't, didn't, get, but didn't get it. But oh, that's misleading. But, yeah, but right. Very misleading. Because yeah. yeah. when you look at the bottom line, we're like, oh, wow, we made this much, but yeah. yeah. $30 and, less each child. Right. It was ah. $270 less. Yeah. $300 less. Yeah. Than what Sports Engine was telling us. Right. Because they that's didn't. only if they have another uh, sibling or something in the program, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. If they didn't have a sibling, then they had to pay the registration. Right. right. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. But yeah, but I, but I think even in teen camp, there were several siblings just in teen camp, and I think mm -hmm. it gave each person, it to right? Two. Yeah, each each child was a lot of thirty dollars more. It showed up on the subtotal. Yeah, showed up on the subtotal. And we're like, this isn't right. I, I honestly do, and I, I again, I'm going to say it again. I, there are some good things that came out of it because I think we understand now that there's opportunities with using a system like that. I don't think that Sports Engine may be the right one because it's right. not comprehensive. And there was, and poor Jody, there were so many things that Jody had to keep going back and asking them to do. Yeah. And I think they were overwhelmed by what we were asking them to do because they're just a sport. You know, you, you know, you sign, you sign up for soccer, and there's only so many fields you need to check to sign, you sign up for soccer. Mm -hmm. This is not a camp. Mm -hmm. So I think we, if we even put in a little time to even research what kind of camp software might be out there, mm -hmm. that's not expensive or something that you might be able to purchase mm -hmm. and have. I mean, that might be a good alternative. Mm -hmm. 
you can ask some of the other Barrington. I was just thinking about Barrington again. Yeah. They've been a good go to with that. Um, I know a couple of people with some of the direct family have been looking and doing keywords. Yeah, because I think, a, yeah, I think this fall we should really take an opportunity to take a look at that. It should be one of the high priorities on our mm -hmm. list. Because I know with you, like, I think you want to get a, away from any paper registration, correct? Correct. Right. That's what, that what, something to add on to that. That was Brittany and I's thing as well. Like, if we want to do, like, a registration, do one or the other. Try not to do both because I think it got a little bit confusing. Yeah. It and did. And the reason why we did it is because we understood it. It was actually mainly me because I understood that the processing fees were going to be high. Mm -hmm. And we should, at least for the first year, give them the option. An option. But yeah. it became a paper nightmare. Yeah. So it's not worth it. One way or the other. Yeah. My concern about doing away with like paper applications is that there are people out there that don't have email addresses that use someone else and registered with, through someone else, or people who would rather just pay and do the paper application. I know I picked up half a dozen or so here at the town hall, and a couple people approached me about doing the paper registration. So I, I don't know. But there are everything doing. now is so computerized that you just can't you can't do anything with paper. I mean, I know there's some people that still. I was happy to do paper, but then I didn't want to pay whatever it was. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I would have done paper except for it was ten o'clock. <laughs> 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 that's what I hate. Um, I do paper. Yeah. <laughs> right. So. And I understand paper is a nightmare, and we don't, and we've had a lot of issues. But we did have a good handful of people that did it, and I think maybe I picked up 15 of them. So, at least, but anyway, so we know now that it's just take a look at it. Mm -hmm. And in the meantime, negotiate where it's pulls in and mm -hmm. see if there's something over the Yeah, see if there's something, you know, if we can somehow say, hey, we're, we're going to look for something else because. But the other thing, too, is with the parent survey, we want to be able to pay attention to what they say, too. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people came out and liked it. Mm -hmm. Right. For whatever reason. So we'll combine it, combine our thought process with what mm -hmm. you know, the community wants and what we can offer. So are we going back to your Especially not having us, too. No, you can put in to just drop it off at school or drop it off right. here. Right. You know, yeah. so they may yeah. want to stay with. Version. But it was interesting. Yeah. yeah. The two or three of the ones I did pick up were out of town, and they came here and they were asking the town hall staff questions. Yeah. They wanted well, information. I mean, maybe. Again, we're not going to solve it, but maybe when the time comes, we will put it back on the table and see if it's something we want to offer. I I do get it. I do understand. People just want to do paper. People don't want to put their payment. So let's just agree to revisit it. Mm -hmm. when the time comes. And maybe it's worth saying to them what has worked. Like what Something are from us. Are, yeah. And mm -hmm. you know, maybe fill a gap too. Mm -hmm. Rather than getting a hundred phone calls. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be nice. I know. <laughs> that would be nice. Okay. It's a Jody in her bed. Um, <laughs> is there anything else that we can think of that went well? And uh, better than expected and will likely continue to do. I mean, things that are glaringly obvious. I have a question for Kelly. Mm -hmm. What did your boys think of the STEM activity that they did on that side? Yeah, they liked it. They I got fun. a lot of compliments about it. Yep. Like a lot of compliments about it, saying it was amazing. And how did the Mount Washington one go? Was that okay, not so good? It was good. We just, I don't know, I feel like not as many people were engaged as with it. Yeah. Well, so, I'm, I'm a huge think, proponent of STEM. Yeah. I think the STEM, from what I'm hearing, went well. Yeah. And that the guy was willing to work with you and Brittany. I did have a conversation with him first, but he didn't have enough, a lot of kids sign up for one program, so he changed it on the fly mm -hmm. and worked with you guys mm -hmm. to do something that would bring in um, more kids. And then I was like, oh, please tell me it's not an additional charge for materials or something. <laughs> I went back and checked it. It was not. You know what would be really great is I, this. He's a human age student, right? 
the other thing really great is if we go back to think about um, fundraising, is if we could work with the school to get some sort of play sort of activity, um, but maybe charge just a small fee and kind of split the profit somehow or something, come up with something that has to do with the STEM thing. That's just a thought. And um, the committee member who resigned um, said that they STEM through um, the shipyard and they do it in South Florida. my list for what I thought worked well was the Facebook closed group. Yeah. Um, I thought you and Brittany did a really great job of continually having stuff on there. Mm -hmm. Granted, I wasn't looking at it all the time, um, but for the parents who were, you know, mm -hmm. I thought it worked That's out really well. The parents I talked to today said that she thought communication was great this summer, as opposed to last summer, of getting all this stuff out and, and up to date. And, you know, if somebody put a question out there, it was answered very quickly, and so. Time goes a lot easier for us. Yeah. Yeah, so I thought that worked out really good. So one thing I wouldn't expect to change, I think we should continue the Facebook closed group. I think the pool was also good. My son loved going to the pool. Mm -hmm. And there were two weeks he decided out he wasn't supposed to go on Friday. You guys went for an extra trip to the pool, and it was really nice. That's two weeks, I think. So on the day-to-day -day activities, what went what went well in your thoughts on it? Mm -hmm. Did you have enough programs? Did you have enough um, items that could keep people engaged? I think engaged? that after Brittany and Katie were able to get more items for us, mm -hmm. it was a lot better. Mm -hmm. With the first couple of weeks of summer, I felt like we had a quite a few kids that were getting very bored mm -hmm. very easily. Um, but with the amount of items that we had after the sports, we had a lot of kids mm -hmm. that were involved. And we changed it up a little bit this year. So um, instead of doing our like age groups, we kind of were breaking kids off. Like as they were coming in, we were putting them in different groups with different counselors. So they were getting a different counselor every day. Like and um, we were just doing different groups and rotating through those groups. And like doing different things. So I think that worked a lot better for us. Um, but then on days where we didn't have so many counselors or some, one counselor was on vacation and then two of our part, like our part timers weren't there for like on those days, it wasn't as easy and we had to kind of break them up into their, their groups. But I think with the whole items and toys and everything, that with what we have now, it definitely is better than what we um, so all the, this is a question, all the equipment that was bought, is that in storage now? Yeah, it's all on the shed. Okay. Yeah. All right. And just one, one thing with the pool, the blow-up pool, I'm not sure we can do it next year. It wasn't really something the insurance company had said that they would want us to be part of. Okay. So um, I know that they are, but we'll just wait and see what happens next year. But um, it's, inflatables are not something that they like to deal with. Okay. Um, so, um, I know. It's, still, it's, it's liability. It's liability is the problem, you right. know. So, I'm not saying no, 100% no, but yeah. we'll, we'll have to talk about it some more and get more mm -hmm. detail of what they are, what, because they wanted to make sure you had, you know, um, people watching them all the time, making sure that they had the right equipment if they were smart. I'm not sure they understood what the age group was, so you know, okay. like wings on or, yeah, right, or you know right. what I'm saying? Right. It wasn't that kind of a pool. Right. You know, yeah, but, right. you know, they, because they have, they have something on an inflatable pool, it's like, you know, you can get one that's four feet right. tall, right. you know, now. Right. So let, let me just get more information, but it's just kind of like an FYI right now. Okay. So say that we might have them not be able to do them, but we'll see. Okay. So is it, just for my own clarification, concerns about any pool or concerns about the inflatable? I think it's any pool. I, I think it's, I, I, to be honest with you, inflata inflatables are, I can't get insurance for any day to have any kind of inflatable device. Mm -hmm. I can't 
can't even get insurance. Like, you know, your the policy houses, houses, houses I can't yeah. get insurance. Because I have to have insurance this year, my family does. I can't get it with inflatables. So it, inflatables are an issue regardless of what size they are. But I also think water, water is an issue with, I mean, sprinklers are not because you're not, you, you can't submerge in a sprinkler. You know, that's our only issue is like, like you know, if we weren't able to have the pools, is we have one area for a sprinkler. So mm -hmm. yeah. it's just I mean we can we can do like water games and like drip drip drop and everything, but then it's we have buckets that are going with like every five minutes mm -hmm. and it's like all right, you have to send the counselor in and fill it up and the counselor goes out and it's like, All right, another counselor has to go in and fill it up. So it's just like we're running like out of water very quickly with those. And I think yeah. that the pool was, I mean, obviously easier because kids were just yeah. sitting there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like I say, it's not off the table completely, okay. but wait, I just need to get more details from yeah. the insurance company. So. Totally. What about oh, the yeah. outside faucet? Are you able to use that? That's what, we're, that we, that's what we use for the sprinkler. You only have one? Yeah. Really? Yeah. But can't you put an attachment on that gives you a, a dual? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That you have one that you can then make one equal to? Mm -hmm. That's a possibility. Yeah. I mean, we only have one, one hose that works. So we can probably work on that. Was that our hose or was that a school hose? Do you know? I think it's a school hose. I think our hose is has like tears and so many kinks in it that yeah. doesn't work. All right, so I've got that on the list as one of the items to look at uh, over the fall and early winter. Let's figure out what we're going to do about one, the insurance portion of it. Mm -hmm. And if there's, we need to have a plan B, what that, what that could look like. Because I know you and I have the, the concern about the, the kids and the heat exhaustion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the common thing is you just we gotta you gotta have water. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know, like it's just there's hardly any shade out there. And, and then we have a struggle with the pool as well because we don't have any areas where it's flat. Mm -hmm. Right. Like all of our pools were on the hill, mm -hmm. and then that yeah. turns into more of an issue as well too. Mm -hmm. So. Mm -hmm. And it's not like we could lift the pools up and bring them to a flat once area they, too. Once they're full. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So I mean. Trying to get the boys to dump them out at night was a struggle enough. Four mm -hmm. of them trying to dump it was coming. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, we'll see what we can mm -hmm. do. We'll work on the insurance company first. We'll do it with Plan B. Yeah. Okay, um, anything else that you think went better or went well or better than expected? What about the snack cards? That went pretty well. The what? The snack cards, the index cards. We yeah. had some pros and cons to that. Yeah, we yeah. had some issues with that. Yeah. On, I mean, on town side. Yeah. I mean, it worked well because the kids weren't, like, getting upset about losing money every day mm -hmm. when they couldn't find it. Or... <laughs> I think what went good is that the, the limited uh, options that you gave them. I yeah. think that that worked good. I think so, too. And the flow of them. And yep. you guys were pretty much stocked up mm -hmm. most of the time. Most of the time, yeah. Um, so I think that went well, the index card thing. I think the index the card reforms. works well, but it's yeah. it, it's the giving the money back, and we have someone who has only twenty five cents on the yeah. on the books, and we have someone who has forty four dollars on the books. Right. Right. So we may want to say no refunds under five dollars or something like that that will encourage them to use yeah. it up and instead of. Well, well so because it's told you, do right? It. And I told you about my experience at UNH. I, I, we, I, I think I brought that. Yes. Yeah, so my daughter went to soccer camp at UNH and they, you know, granted it was only three days mm -hmm. camp or whatever, four days, she was three nights, four days, but you, you could buy snack, um, $5 or $10 coupon or whatever it was. And they said, nice, bold, no refunds. Mm -hmm. Make sure you use your money. Right? Your money. Yeah. The, they were keeping the rest. Mm -hmm. I, didn't, I didn't even say to my daughter, I was like, could you use your whole snack? <laughs> Barrington, she has, she calls it camp bucks. I, we should find out how that works too, as maybe a possible option. Mm -hmm. Camp bucks. Yeah. I don't know how she uses it. Hmm. My yeah. other suggestion for the index cards too is I think we had index cards individually for each kid, right? I think, you know, like certainly in my case, like there should be, I think, a family index card, right? The only issue they were running with that is that. We thought about okay, well, what if one kid is using more of the majority of the, the money rather than the other? Yeah. Well, that's that would be a parent issue. Yeah. Yeah. But then it's just. Uh, yeah. Just
Just say, hey, sorry. And, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Like, you're out. You're out of family money. You know, right. Whatever. Yeah. I enjoyed it. So <laughs> we, can, we can put that on the list again to, to figure out between that and it. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, because at least, at least consider at a certain dollar amount that and below it's not refundable. Well, you know? maybe could we even do this? Could we, and I, and I don't know, this might sound ridiculous, but I'm going to just say it. Could we set, ask people at this point in time, um, would you care to donate? Your 25 cents. Uh -huh. or, yeah, yeah, well, you know, before I check this cut. Yeah. Oh. Would you care to donate the rest oh, of your. Yeah. What a great idea. Yeah. Camp, snack money to yeah. the recreation program. Yeah, that's a great idea. That is a great idea. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Um, I know you can have mine. won't be do that. <laughs> but if someone within the rec committee can do it or something. You want me to send out like a mass email or something? Oh, what? Should it be from the directors or us? Who do you think it should be from? Probably the committee, the rec committee. Yeah, yeah, because then she'll have to keep track of things yeah. we find. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, okay. if that's a good idea to see, especially if you don't have very much. I mean, they probably wouldn't be willing to do that. So someone who has the $44 is probably going to want it back. Who is that? Is that you, Celia? But I have my intent. I can tell you. I don't know if people even know how much they have left. <laughs> no. There's, there's a couple of people that we explained to them, like, what was going to happen, that they would get a refund check and mm -hmm. stuff like that. But... That's well, I wanted to get that parent survey out. I went, no, no, because people sometimes they don't read their surveys. They read it. So right, yeah, yeah. All right, so it's... Um, I was going to thank Jennifer because they told me on the last day how much I have left on my account. And I was like, okay, you... I uh, told my kids, take 10 bags of cookies home. Let's go. <laughs> well, we had, a, we had a parent, like, picking up their kids on the last day and said, all right, go, like, finish your snack check money. And they still had, like, a lunch there with eight or nine dollars. Even after buying like six packs of cookies, there's four packs of chips. No, Did you just funny. give her the index cards, or do you have like a list of um, how much people have left? She had the index cards. Yeah, Brittany brought them to her. Okay, okay, sorry. Brittany brought them to Caroline. Yeah. Okay, so I can send out a mass email. I think what she did is she, Brittany, like wrote each person's address on it and then wrote how much money they had. Okay. All right, because if somebody comes back and says, well, how much do I have in there? All right. Yeah, no, uh, we can get Caroline to give us that information back, you know, and, and see if we can do this. And I think that's a great idea to mm -hmm. see if they'll donate it to the program. That's a really good yeah. idea. So what I do, like you said, let my younger son go up to the snack check. You know, <laughs> something on the last day. Yeah. Come on. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah we have quite a few parents that were like, you guys know you're going to need, like, some money. We brought them by from Polanco. Mm -hmm. My niece on the and she's like, so I should check with Caroline first to see if we can actually do that. I will. Talk, I'll talk to her. Okay. okay. Or, or I'm trying to think. Would it be possible to send out? Although it's a lot of work. All I can think of is like, you know, if we we did individual, which is a lot of work. But if you like, if I got an email that said. Your your balance on your snack check is such and such. Would you care to donate that? Mm -hmm. Oh, um, individual email. Oh, that's a great idea. Do a form letter, and then all you have to do is go in, dear Mr. and Mrs. Anderson or Mr. and Mrs. Benedetto, your account balance is blank. Would you donate? Would you donate? Yeah, we could do that. That's a great idea. And you only have a maximum of like seventy emails to send, right? Or, I mean, I don't know how many. How many families we have? Oh, I don't even know. Families you could ask. Yeah. Well, you find out from Caroline, and yeah, I'd, I'd be happy to. Because that's a great idea. Yeah. How about that? I came up with a stellar idea. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm just going to go home. <laughs> I'm going to go home now. <laughs> <laughs> My stellar idea. I'm going to go home. So in. we liked the amount of snack shark, snack shark options, and we seemed to generate a lot money from it. Mm -hmm. We did get, so they gave me the box of snacks that came back, so I donated the individual cereal boxes and like the Cheez-Its and stuff like that. I kept the Fun Pops because the shelf life on those are 2020, so we can use these over the next year as they get boxes on the storm somewhere. But I thought it worked out good. That was a really good idea. Do we know how much we made total? Curious. On the snacks? I don't. And I'll tell you later. Well, so the thing about this is that it doesn't peel out. Snacking. Can I assume that? No, it doesn't. 
because the deposits that they dropped include both pizza and snacks. But did you guys uh, did you do that yet? Um, <laughs> so Brittany and Karen, that was a Brittany thing that she did with Caroline each week. Yeah. Um, I know at the beginning she was specifying whether it was pizza or snacks. Right. But the way that Caroline put it is that it's all coming in as like a snack, basically. It's right. Right. Yeah. 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 So, like pizza, pizza, so pizza, pizza, snack. Yeah. yeah. It. They ended up. She ended up just writing snacks down for everything. Okay. So. Yeah, well, that makes sense. Because so, so they could pay for their pizza on their snack card too, right? So we weren't doing no, it that no. way. Oh. So, but what you could do is parents would come in like, I don't know. With we had a parent came in one day with like fifteen dollars and was like, all right, I want my kids to each have. Two slices of pizza, and then whatever is left over, please put it on their snack check, snack check card. So, I, I mean, they did it okay. that way. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. So they paid you the day of the, the pizza. Pizza. Day. Yeah. Yeah. And then you guys paid for the pizza with the money, right? So they only ordered. Is that we even did invoices. Oh, okay. For my, for the pizza, I, I, well, there were a few weeks that didn't work out that way. But yeah, they come in. Brittany gave her receipt oh, okay. that she was getting. Okay. Reimbursed, but, I didn't realize that. But. Yeah, but we were doing um, invoices. Okay. So, so you turned in all of the pizza money, but you turned that in separately in the cash box, I mean the snack box. Oh, no, it all came no. in together. All came in together. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So this drops in here, 397, 309, 375, 185. The last one was on a Friday was 254. That's but the awesome. Wednesday on the 14th was 185. So you can assume the 185 was probably pizza. pizza. Mm -hmm. yeah. And maybe some snacks. But so that whole week it was over $400 for the last week. Wow. But the pizza, you know, we're getting invoiced for like $100 for mm -hmm. pizza, but it's still a $300. Mm -hmm. So Profit. is there a reason why you didn't allow to have the pizza done on the snack card? Uh, That's curious. a good question. I'm not sure we ever even thought about that or talked about it. I saw one brought down my snack check total well, by a couple of dollars. Dealing with one kind of process. See, my thought was, and I can see here me stepping out, but um, I thought that we handed in money for pizza, and then we were, then they ordered the pizza by how much money they collected, and then just paid with cash. So I guess that was my thought. Uh, Caroline didn't want any cash coming out of the, the cash box. Everything needed to be invoiced. Okay. Everything was invoiced. Okay. There was not one dollar that should have come out unless it was returned change for a mm -hmm. snack or something. Right. Mm -hmm. But okay. which we didn't even really do that. We would just put the amount on the snack box. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I guess that's something you could do. I, I think know. that that was a, a Brittany thing, but she kind of was like, it was getting a little confusing at first trying to figure out
You already have money at the time when you get the cash. Right. Yeah. That would have been her concern. And my so concern was, as a parent, coming up with the cash, remembering it's pizza day. Only and once a week, right? Yeah. yeah. Yep. 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 And, 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 like, since my kid was only signed up for the first week, and then even weeks, I didn't, and it was going to be every other week, I didn't expect him to get pizza mm -hmm. after the first week, so I didn't. In, the, until the night before when I get an email and then I'm scrounging for money and hopefully remembering to put it in my pocket so like he might get one slice if I have the money that morning. So was it an issue for you guys though as far as keeping the pizza in the concession separate? Is it, was there any issues with that or is it, did it work just fine? And I think it worked pizza fine. Pizza and insane? Yeah. Okay. So you know we'll be meeting with Caroline mm -hmm. meeting with Kelly in mm -hmm. a couple of weeks mm -hmm. if we have anything coming Maybe it's something you can bring up, mm -hmm. and while she's closing up her books on it, mm -hmm. she has a concern and wants to do things differently. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe yeah I, said, I, don't know, it. I don't know whether it was a her and Caroline thing. I just know that it worked better for her when it, when she was doing it in the morning. Now you don't know, but she had said at the last meeting that she was the drop money included T-shirts. Do you know if she was able to pull out how much money went towards T-shirts? I know, I do know that, so when she was doing a drop, she was writing an index card of, like, how much money was taken in, and then whether month, like, the money was being used for, like, say, a registration for a teacher. I know that she was writing that down. Okay. So that should be separated out. That was separated. Yeah. Because, uh, like, we know. Well, it was, like, on week, I want to say, like, five or, no, maybe four or five, we had a, a team camp person sign up the last couple of weeks and um, on that index card she wrote like registration fee of blah blah blah. Okay. Because like on our my budget, I don't know if it's on your budget or not, for a team camp I pulled out t shirt sales. So if somebody bought an extra shirt, mm -hmm. I would be able to track how many extra shirts were bought so that come next year, do I buy just a number of shirts for the campers or do I buy five or ten extras? Because I know they're going to sell, or do I not? Well, ideally, it should have been the same to me, but I was only able to capture one T-shirt. And I was only able to capture one T-shirt. And I think it was the same family, and I picked up the registration fee after that. Yeah. So a lot of things just got sort of smushed mm -hmm. together. So if I, if I did want to keep track of mm -hmm. snack sales, people sales, I had separate making a list mm -hmm. as fast as possible. Mm -hmm. But then again, I mean, I don't know. If, as long as I know what we actually paid for it versus what we made on it, I mean, and I could so I could kind of tell that, but I, it wouldn't be an exact science. And for the shirts, we could check and see how many we had left over. We did that the number of campers we gave shirts to, and we could figure out how many were sold. And that would be an extra process. That's a lot of work. <laughs> oh, well, I mean, we had leftover shirts from last year as well, so they probably. There's a lot of leftover shirts, which was on my bucket to talk about. Um, yeah. But as far as um, keeping track of inventory, um, I, Kelly and I talked about maybe having a better, some sort of better inventory system as far as shirts and sizes. We don't know what that is or what that looks like, mm -hmm. but it's something to take a look at during fall and winter. I know that Brittany struggled with doing the inventory for the snacks because like, she would do it on Friday nights when she was closing up, but then it was taking her you have to individually count every single one of the freeze pops. You have to individually count, or you have to add on to like what we got for a donation this week. And then to, like, so it was, I mean, she, she was putting a lot of time into it every week. Um, so she was actually counting freeze pops? Yeah. I mean, it was left over for her. Yeah. I don't understand what the problem is. Yeah. I'll see how many we have left. <laughs> or how many we need it? Yeah. How many is in the yeah. freezer? Well, <laughs> it's this high off the bottom. We need to refill. <laughs> it's three. I mean, we'll, we'll have to come up with a mathematical solution to that. Like two inches is two inches on the freezer is sixteen free pops. <laughs> okay. um, I'll find out because I have this. She was individually counting like all of the and the cookies and the cookies, and then like if you had a box that was open of like. Fruit snacks, like there's 50 fruit snacks in there, so you have to count all of those as well. So it was just a lot of time. Could we somehow, I mean, I, I wasn't there, I, but to, you know, to make that inventory like a box or, you know, I don't know, open box, closed box, or something. <laughs> that seems like a lot of extra. 
how much we were selling each week, and we were trying to figure out like, right. that kind of stuff. And it's not like you could do it in the middle of the week because then you still have it. And then it's, it's not like she could do it in the afternoon on Friday because we yeah. were at the pool. So I'm not. I'm not really. I mean, this is just me personally, but I'm not really looking for how many bags of cheese bread we have or how many freeze mm -hmm. pops we have. Right. What I'm looking for is, do we have enough? That's all I care about. How many free spots do you need, or are we out of something? I mean, honestly, I think that any time, like, throughout the entire summer, we were stocked on almost everything. Yeah. And then even if we weren't stocked on something, it was one of you guys coming in, hey, what do you need this week? So I think, honestly, I think that for the most part, we had everything that we needed for the summer. But That's great. I just don't think we need to count at the end of the week. I mean, you have a visual. Mm -hmm. You know what you had, and you know you haven't you opened a box and it's half. Right. No. It is that. I'm not sure that's not necessary. Not sure. So I'm pretty counting freeze pops on the stop doing. Yeah. List. <laughs> or counting <laughs> any of the snacks. I don't think you have to count. Yeah. And your, again, that was something that Brittany had done, and I don't know if it yeah. was because Carolyn wanted to know what we were taking in, or. I don't think, as far as auditing is concerned, she needed down to that fine item. So you're just turning in you're just turning in the cash for the week mm -hmm. for what you sold. Mm -hmm. so, and then you were telling her how much of each item you were selling? Approximately. I would assume. Okay. Because I mean Brittany had this it, uh, D, you have the um, director's binder, right? Yeah. In one of our like folders we have an inventory list. And it was what we started with each week and what we ended with each week. Wow. I mean, there like, well, again, maybe something was said between her and Carolyn. I don't know, but I, I mean, I'll talk to Carolyn. I've got that on the list, so we'll. I'm like, it's very easy to stop Because a lot of this is donations as well, right? It all was. Yeah. So if you're not, if you're not paying times. for it, so then you can't, you don't have to figure out what your cost was versus what your revenue is.
got a little bit confusing and, sh and stressful just to make sure that, like, I know, like, for example, you didn't care if your kid was pulled out of the pool but mm -hmm. when you got there. Mm -hmm. There were a couple of parents that were, like, were like, yes, I want my kid out at this time because I want them to be right for when I get there at this time. Mm -hmm. So, like, that was a little bit stressful. Um, days that were at, like, on site, I think that it was fine because, again, we were just there and we can easily go and get the kid and bring them back. Um, but, how many, were, were there any people that picked up kids, like, when you went to a park or, like, to the, so it was only four days, really, mm -hmm. that you had that? Yeah. Was that, would you say, how, how many would you say per pool day? Was I don't know. I mean, again, quite a few was because, like, a kid had a doctor's appointment right. or a dentist's appointment, things like that, or sometimes it was just, they don't want to come in the morning, they slept in, something like that. But I would say maybe. So it's not a big number, but at the same time, it just turns into, well, you're just not getting here when we're trying to get everybody, like, finish lunch, get suited up, get on the bus, and then it's just the stress of, all right, now I have to get you signed in, and stuff like that, so. So maybe next year we suggest in the, the manuals, um, and maybe we can call it out on Facebook or something at the time, that it's, for maybe count purposes or headcount purposes. Kids gonna go to the pool. We're trying to make sure it's an all day yeah. event or something. Right. Call well, that's the parents' now. responsibility yeah. to, when they get mm -hmm. there to take the child to get changed or whatever. Mm -hmm. right. You shouldn't have to stop everything you're doing by mm -hmm. trying to right. control the other children. Mm -hmm. it, I mean, if they're gonna change their time, they right. should be responsible to right. Right. come up to them, make sure they notify you guys, of course. Yeah. But you know, get their child into the changing room, and mm -hmm. and then you can go. But right. it shouldn't be your, you doing that. I don't think. Right. Right. Either. Right. Because um, you get enough <laughs> to play it with water. You need to be right when you need to be, mm -hmm. and not worrying about right. Like so maybe pulling I'm, this person out for the right, dentist right. appointment right. to make sure they're trapped. And I mean, it can like we had obviously we had a few kids with diabetes as well, so we were pulling them out almost every half hour, making sure that they're checking their numbers, making sure they're yeah. like set, eating, drinking, stuff like that. So I like the. Pulling them out wasn't the biggest issue because, I mean, Brittany and I are, were always on the grass area as well because we always had one or two kids that sat out too. Mm -hmm. So it's, one of us was always sitting over there and then one would bring one kid over and then go back. So, mm -hmm. I mean, that wasn't too big of an issue, mm -hmm. but, yeah. Because you're always watching the clock too. Yep. Right. Right. For when someone said they needed to have yep. someone picked up, you know, so. Yep. Yeah. I mean, yes. I get with the, with the medical issues, mm -hmm. absolutely. Those are your top priorities. Right. And if that got extended, you might have an angry parent who can get the kid out of the pool mm -hmm. half an hour earlier than you. You know what I'm saying? Yep. I just think that that's really their responsibility. Yeah, yeah. Come I, think, I think we need to make sure that that's the same. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. They should come out with the kids. They should come so earlier. Should okay. right. it's, right. Not the, it is not the job of the counselor to have your child prepared for their appointment if it is not along, you know, going along with the. Departure. Yeah. Just keep an eye on. Right. And that's your priority. Right. And I mean, we had a lot of kids, like, again, to look after as well. And I mean, sometimes we didn't even have the amount of, like, eyes that we showed up to. Mm -hmm. So. And honestly, when I was there to pick up Chris, I never <laughs> once thought it was your, or anybody's responsibility to get Chris out of the pool because I needed to take him early. Right. I mean, he's just a parent. And you want to put that? Make yeah. that. Yeah. Make somebody else's right. responsibility. But yep. And yeah. with the exception of the last week, it was scheduled ahead of time. As parents, we got it before camp started. What pool days were going to be and what field trip days were going to be. So yeah, Thursday, could, Thursday was a oh, was a rough day as well, so doing the pool. We just couldn't make arrangements not to mm -hmm. have appointments on that day. Well, mm -hmm. sometimes appointments are done six months in advance. Yeah. You, know, you don't think about right. that when you're doing it. I did notice that on the last day of the last pool day, because that went on Facebook. A bunch of people, I saw that yeah. posted on yeah. Facebook. I'll be there at three to get my kid for their dentist appointment. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 And then Thursday, a lot of parents were like, even though we told yeah. all parents beforehand that we are going to the pool this, like, in the addition. night before. Yep. And I posted on Facebook.
slept the night, the night before as well. We still had, had, we were getting phone calls saying, I'm at the school, where are you guys? Yeah. And it's yeah. like, we told you that we were not going to be there yeah. and stuff like that. So, but that's a different issue. So I don't know if there's... So maybe, so maybe if we're adding, if, and I know we, we couldn't add that until that, that right. last right. minute day, but maybe, maybe if we don't have two days in advance, we don't do it. Well, that was something that was on my list. And yeah. Yeah. I can wait if you want about emergency plans. What happens if, like, the water goes out again? Or um, yeah. is there a backup plan for them? If they know, I don't know if you guys got the email from the no. town that said the water was going to be shut off. We had no idea. We uh, no, Brittany said she got an email about that. Brittany did? Yeah. Oh, maybe her school email? Uh, maybe. Maybe. Yeah. So, I mean, if she didn't have her school email, then... Would we have known? So we making yeah. sure that they get town emails to the directors would be maybe beneficial. Mm -hmm. That whatever um, pertinent information gets to them, but also like um, just like having set aside in the budget a, or in, in our minds a plan that if they're they know ahead of time they can go to. Get a bus, get a, go to Dover, go to Hemingway Park on right. days when they. Because last year we had the no water at the school because they were working on Miller Street. We had to bring in porta pots or something. Right, mm -hmm. the porta pots. So, 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 I understand what you're saying, but you have to be a little careful about just all of a sudden you can get a trip and going because mm -hmm. that's not budgeted. Right. So, so unless you're going to budget yeah. something for you know incidentals of you know. Um, unexpected things. And that's what I'm saying. There might be some kind of a contingency or something in your budget because if it's not budgeted, then, then it can't happen. Right. So I'm saying maybe we look at one or two days extra bus fees so that if something does happen, they can shoot off somewhere. Mm -hmm. And we probably have extra state park passes that they could have hopped in a bus and gone to a state park last year we ended up with a couple extra state the only issue with that is that if they're not planning ahead of time we can't just go because if they have other groups there right. we can make it in right 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 which right. we that one day that our bus got messed up and we ended up going to a different park than we were supposed to thank god they didn't have any groups because we would have turned right around and went back to school right. so it's worth looking at then in the fall and winter a contingency plan for items like that i mean I think Henry Wall is a great, a great idea. Right. I don't, yeah. not, we wouldn't be able to do a state park because mm -hmm. that has to be planned way, way in advance. Well, I think um, plan A is to try and get ahead of the planning so we we know that we're all being properly communicated to ahead mm -hmm. of, you know, ahead of time that something's going to be worked on or happening so we can. But plan B is if that does happen that we're not, then we need to have some sort of contingency plan mm -hmm. for yeah. something like that. And have it in the budget, mm -hmm. budgeted. Um, so, right, I think the invoice was 1400 that we paid out for shirts. 
1470 and you have $1,500, which is great. I just, I'm praying that CMJ is bought to this again next year. Because all those shirts we have it's CMJ, CMJ and it's um, less shirts that we have to actually order next mm -hmm, year. And mm -hmm. we will have a different profit to you know, put somewhere else. I think the, one of our issues is that we have quite a few shirts of like sizes that kids just don't wear. Like we had a lot, we had a lot of kids that wanted a specific size or something like that, and then there was a lot of shirts that were not even not even used. And I think for a lot of like the smaller shirts as well, it's like parents were like ordered one size, and then when they came to pick it up, it was like, well, that's too small. I need this size. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. that's yeah. another issue with that too. I think I brought it with me, but um, yeah, we still have a big inventory. But so one of one of two things we can we will hold on to obviously. Mm -hmm. um, until next year, and again, I'm really hoping that CMJ will want to sponsor us again next year. If they do, great. That's the less shirts we mm -hmm. have to mm -hmm. we have to order. Okay, where did I say we had? Um, I had at least 80. I think it was 87 shirts in total. 55. Open? Yeah, 55 were Camp Rally, um, and then the white ones that were I think tie dyed. We have a lot of the white ones. We didn't even we didn't end up tie dyeing all of them because we had. So few kids signed up that yeah. we just, I mean, tie-dyeing took us three, four hours after they were ready. Right, show me you have 55 Camp Raleigh shirts left over and mm -hmm. 22 white t-shirts. Yeah, so that's almost like a thousand dollar inventory. But anyways. Um, white t-shirts with CJ on the back. That was for tie-dyeing. The white t-shirt was for team camp. For team yeah. camp. Yeah. So anyways, we've got some white shirt. Um, somebody brought up to me a really crazy idea <laughs> that if, I mean, God willing, if CNJ does not sponsor us again next year, we obviously can't use the shirts. But we, there might be a good possibility of just selling them, like as a fundraiser. So we have one of these, one of these fundraisers we intend and uh, attend in February, March, and hopefully we'll know by then if CNJ is going to sponsor us. Sell the shirts for five bucks. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of um, you know, for all the kids that really enjoyed the team camp shirts too, and wanted those. So I think it's, it'd be a good plan B if they don't sponsor us. But so we know we have an inventory. We don't have to order as much. It'd be great. And I have 10, 10 to 15 community shirts from last year that sat in my house that didn't sell. So I need to sell my shirts. But go out of business sale. CMJ <laughs> would love us if we are to donate, if, if we are to ask them for a donation again next year. Mm -hmm. They would like us to invoice them how much. Because we got okay from C and J back in way back March between March and May. We got their donation by email. They, the person who has dealt with us in their marketing department, was out on maternity leave, so somebody else was filling in for her. They okayed it. They okayed the logo and stuff because the logo last year was wrong. So then it, we never got the check, and it was brought up to D that we never got the check. So I emailed our contact there and they said, please invoice us so we have a record of it. And I said, we didn't do any invoices this year. I can send you our official letter and then you have a record. But it's your amount is not on there because you always give more. And so they would like an invoice in the future. I'm sorry, I'm just saying that. And Caroline said she would, if they, if, if they do a donation for us, we need to let Caroline know. She'll do the invoice and send it on our behalf. Okay. Mm -hmm. One last.
we're going to do one for inside. Did it ever happen? No. Um, okay. A banner for Susan J. For Tank C and J. Oh. And I looked into them and. Well, we had something up. You, did you do that for the bank? Or yeah. Something? But the one for the bank is indoor only. And it took three hours over at Staples. The, and to get one that goes outside so people can see it when they're driving in it will take about a week. And I could get one for Family Fun Day. But it's going to cost me more money. Okay, so why? what's the difference between an indoor and outdoor one? The, the indoor one that we have cannot get wet. The ink will smear. And if it gets too hot, it'll stick to stuff. Okay. What's the material of the banner? It's the same it material. The it's just the paint is the problem. And that it gets, the one that they do at Staples in-house is um, not as high quality. So when it heats up, mm -hmm. it'll stick. And then okay. if, you, if you roll it up it hot, it'll, 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 be, it'll stick okay. together okay. and it'll deteriorate. Okay. So that's what the woman at Staples is discussing with me. And I've looked into them and for, at Staples, you can get a banner. I guess it was like five by, or two by three, with grommets in it, mm -hmm. so we can put it on. It's like twenty five dollars, mm -hmm. and it takes a week. And this equipment's about the same price. I tried Zello, Zazel, or something like that. Um, that's who I bought mine from. I have not. I think it's V A Z Z L E or something like yeah, that. Yeah, Zazel or Zazel. Zazel or, like yeah, I, not, I can that. send you the link. But that's why I bought Family Days, and they were really good quality, really good quality. Um, and then outdoor the, ones. Yeah. The um, guy who does the printing of the T-shirts here in town mm -hmm. at the mill said it'll take him three days to do an outdoor banner, but it'll be about seventy-five dollars, depending on the price, and he needs the graphics. So we could always talk to him, but I put out of pocket for the one from Newberry Savings Bank, and I didn't want to go and put out of pocket $75 down there. there. High. Um, as much as I like to keep it local. So, um, and I just didn't have the extra funds to do it for C&J, but I was thinking um, I can do one for C&J for Family Fun Day if we're going to have a table or if we're going to sponsor something at um, Family Fun Day, then we could have it on our table and then we have it for the future. If C&J does sponsor us again, we could say, we have this banner and we just go out there and put it out and everybody will see it at drop off and use it at other events that we're part of. Yeah. And Family Fun Day can have my change, so okay. I'll know more after tomorrow night. What kind of change? Shorter day. Oh, okay. They can't get any volunteers at all to help. You know, for it's too few, too few people that are on the committee for their running for their work. Mm -hmm. So it's really tough. Speaking of the Facebook page, do we have um, 
Um, does Kelly and I have the admin rights for that Facebook post group? No. Okay, so. I tried adding Brittany to the admin rights and I couldn't. I don't know why. I have haven't played around with it since like week one, but I can do that as well. Yeah, I mean, well you're not on the job. Yeah, if you could do that, that would be really, really great. Mm -hmm. I mean I know that we were I know that Brittany this year and I think that the plan was well, her and I talked about doing it. Does that mean you have to sign up with a different admin or could No, anybody can make a page. Oh, okay. You just it's very easy. Okay. I can show you how to do that if you wanted to as well. Um, the phone. Do we have a phone? You have a phone? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a phone. There are a few big boxes to go through. And um so do they I didn't take a good look at the phone, but does that one have texting capability at all? Mm -hmm. It does. Mm -hmm. One of the things I was thinking about as far as communication, although communication to parents has been really great this year, um, maybe doing a contact loop um, for texting, too, for circumstances, last-minute circumstances, like when Brittany wanted to tell him about the water, you know, mm -hmm. come get your, mm -hmm. your camper. Um, do you yeah, have see that constant texting capability? Because I'm not looking, I'm at work, I'm not looking at Facebook. I know we did send out an email as well. No, no, no. Um, I just don't have the ability to look at it all day long. So, I no. texting. Yeah, I just like there's a lot of parents who go there, so. So it takes some time to yeah. set it up. Yeah, I mean, it takes some time, but it may yeah. be worth it in the end. Right. Oh, but then when they all reply, and then I can mm -hmm. match it with Well, if you do like a Yeah, then you get 100, then they're all replying all. Yeah. 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 We're doing no reply. Yeah, doing no reply. Yeah. That would be a good idea. Mm -hmm. um, do you always like a copy and paste kind of thing, too, like, so that not everybody is getting good replies from? I know I was there when a parent came up and says, oh, another parent is texting me. I, they don't know how to contact you. They're having car trouble. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, well, or I uh, saw the conversation. Well, they need to connect with us on Facebook. Facebook or email yeah. is what we were saying at that point. Yeah. So having the phone available, mm -hmm. like the first day, and putting yeah. it in your parent letter. This is best way to contact us here's a phone number mm -hmm. I mean I think email works really well too, too because I mean for myself like that was coming up on my watch so as a parent with email I, I could see something right away we have a spot in the parent handbook too that tells that should that tells you what the phone number is but last year we didn't But we can just make sure we do that. Okay. And, and I don't know. Um, I heard that Jordan knew a lot and was talking to my parents. And that, so it's just nice that you heard the information out there. Yeah. Okay. Um, what else? Um, grievance calls are talking about handbook. Is there one in your handbook? I looked through the handbook after you asked me that. So, did I get some things this year? I don't think there were. I think there's some. But I always think about um, having one just in case there are. There's a confidential, secure way to go about it, and everybody knows the process. Right. Okay. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. And then if you're not, if you don't get the answers you want, you know who. The next step is, and you're not floundering and getting more frustrated and angry at the table. 
always make a copy of it and say, this is the procedure you have to go through. Yeah, or you could do that right on the page. A picture on this Secretary or something. It's so maybe just a chart. Like, this is, if you have an yeah. issue, this is who you go to. Mm -hmm. You don't get the response, then you move up the ladder. And it shows who it is. And then just take a copy of that, put it on there, and they can just hand it out. If, they, if a parent or something is feeling like they're not getting resolution. Yeah, I think contact, um, people contact each other and have a new even um, okay. form or whatever. A uh, contact list, maybe. A, a, you know, an escalation contact list you know, so you get results. You can go up the list. I, need, I think they need to have something. Yeah. Um, but you also don't want to encourage <laughs> a lot of that by putting something in a, a manual a form or whatever. Right, so maybe. Excessive amounts of so maybe it's something that we have and then we give it to the directors and they hand it out if we did. Well, yeah, I think that's the handbook. handbook yeah. And then maybe a little slip of paper yeah. in the office just to if you don't get it if you don't feel like you're it's satisfied that whatever yeah. the complaint was and that they weren't listening and they weren't hearing what you were trying to say, then maybe you say that then you can contact these people if you need mm -hmm. to go a little further. I think the same out. should be said for uh, even when it comes to financial questions or anything like mm -hmm. that, um, administrative contracts, and you should have that all, mm -hmm. those roles and responsibilities yeah. all sorted out even before you yeah. put things out. Yep. So it's easier for people. So they're not bothering them. Not, well, and you know, that's like, another thing too is like, our, I mean, a lot of the questions, yes, we can't answer, but when it comes to financials, do we say, I'm sorry, we can't help you, this is who you should talk to, or... Okay. That's a, we had that we had that conversation with Brittany you know, at the end, and, and that honestly, that was my feeling. Like I would rather take that all away from person in charge and saying, "I'm sorry, I don't, I'm, I don't have so that yeah, answer that was for like you. Saying, it's like, you need to." That was her. Her, her thought yeah. is either can I have rights to know of something, or yeah. should I just be like, or should give me no rights and say, "I'm sorry, this is." I just think when it comes to, so I think when it comes to the registration and tuition and all that stuff, I, I don't think that necessarily needs to lie with the directors. You guys have I, enough stuff, because you have enough there's stuff, stuff to, do. to do. So, yeah, so I think for, for that responsibility to be on, you know, you and Brittany was just, you know, too much. Like, well, again, that's, that, too, that's part of defining the roles and responsibilities yes. and mm -hmm. making sure that that's communicated, whether in a handbook or handouts for parents or the welcome letter or here's who to contact when or put it on right. Facebook or yeah. whatever resources we have available, just go and put it out there. Mm -hmm. You're not eliminating you know, little eyeballing or whatever it is that you're, <laughs> you're getting, you know? Yeah. waiver came up this year or I don't know this was for me that somebody wanted to walk to and from camp. I know it was across the street. Right. right. It wasn't yeah. like to and from. Right. It was across the street. Right. Right. Okay. So teen camp which could walk. Yeah. But there were some kids in Camp Raleigh who were the same age who were in Camp Raleigh because mm -hmm. their parents needed full time because it's three days. Mm -hmm. Do does the select board still want to see all of those in the future to make a decision, or can we come up with a policy to run by to run that by the board and see if we can have a comprehensive policy for the committee when it's not taken up the select board? Was it a huge issue this year? It was one. one it was one. But when I dropped off the form the following day, a couple of the kids saw it. Oh, I want that. I want that too. But it was, I mean, kids may have said it, but parents never. They're hard to do it. They know the way. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then that's a mock, and that parent is saying, "I, I." Yeah. My, my first, my personal feeling about.
about that like is it. if you're in like Camp Raleigh, right. unless there's like that special, I, I feel mm -hmm. like if you're in Camp Raleigh, your parents are putting you still in that. No, well, then you're another not, thing is, is you're not like, signing yourself out. <laughs> another thing is too is like on those forms, which was very helpful. It was designate a time that you want your kid to leave camp. But say you have a kid that comes up at two thirty and it's like, no, I actually have somewhere to be at three o'clock. I need to leave now. But their their sheet says four o'clock. It's like, okay, well, what do I do in this instance? Like, I think that it worked really well for team camp, but to do it for Raleigh, I think it just puts another stress on. I think yeah, we'll try to find ways out the right. door. I don't think yeah, we should just, uh, open that box. Open that box okay. and whatever. No. <laughs> although there were a couple times, my boys, although I didn't let them ride their bikes, but my boys were like, can we ride our bikes to Camp Raleigh? And I was like, well, yeah, you can, but i got to follow you. I know. So. That would be awesome. <laughs> 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 it's just Mom, the same. Mom, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>
it would just be one person yeah, saying something. Yeah, you still would have to put, oh, you have to put that in somebody's name. No, no. 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 how do you control, yeah. how do you know yeah. what is being spent? You have, you have, you can see, you have to do it in receipts just like Caroline is currently doing. Like, this is, we log in actually, once you use your Visa card, you log in. It was to savevisa.com and put in your account number mm -hmm. and it gives you all the transaction details. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's, that's oh. Awesome. And Caroline would still get receipts. We would hope that would match whatever is on that transaction. But then at the same time, do we put like we can get more than one stuff for summer because I don't think 500 would be enough for the entire season. You can refill them. Yeah. You can refill them. <laughs> <laughs> that right. definitely would be enough. No. But for what but, we did, but a lot, you also have to aim to having a lot of companies bill us, invoice us, mm -hmm. ahead of time. So we, then we, we have that all taken care of, and then you don't have to worry about the cash. You know, I mean, like I say, if we know Kennedy Lake is done it, or uh, Water Country does it, let's talk to them in early March or April and see what kind of a deal they can get if they get enough okay. discounts anyway. Yeah, I think the other struggle we had with that is that we, don't, we didn't know how many kids were at Canty. So trying to get a specific number of, all right, say we're going to have, or say we get an invoice for seven kids, what if we end up having eight kids in a week? Like, what do we do there? Mm -hmm. And that was what Caroline suggested, is that if we could contact the vendors ahead of time and say, we're coming in with a group, mm -hmm. this is what we're expecting. Can you invoice us at the end of the day? Right, so they have then, the right number. Then they have the correct number, and then that way, if something happens, a kid is out sick that day, you're not okay. paying for that okay. kid. Right. So Caroline was like, call them, see if they can invoice us, and tell them that we're a town entity, mm -hmm. which means that we're more guaranteed, guaranteed or reliable mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. than an individual. Yeah. Then we can, um, she could send them a check a couple days later, and we ended up doing that with like take flight and stuff like that. Yeah. They ended up invoicing the town. But and there were definitely some that did not do that. Yeah. Right. Because, so, and I think, honestly, because their group policy was such that we didn't qualify mm -hmm. for anything group. I think if we have numbers and we qualify for a group, their, you know, I think Funtown group was 25 kids. I don't know if we'll yes. ever, ever be at that. So, um, you know, I think Canby was a little bit less, maybe at 20 or something. But, but Canby told us, that was kind of a funny thing, Canby told Katie, she called them a couple days before and said, will you invoice us? And then she called again, and, and they said yes. And then she called the night before because we, we, we went in through a group window, but they said, no, you're going to have to pay us tomorrow, but we'll invoice you. And so Katie told me that story. I'm like, oh, so you mean they'll give us a receipt? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was like, okay, who didn't really understand what invoice meant on that one? But it was, I'm like, I'm glad you called back. <laughs> Maybe what the thought in my head is that we come up with a form letter for some of these vendors that tells them we're a town, we're looking to bring our camp, and that we send out, and that we're a nonprofit because um, Take Flight gave us a big discount. Oh my God, it was great. A nonprofit, and I know that Fun Town Splash Town gives discounts or bulk tickets to communities like Barrington and stuff. So if we can contact them in like March and find out what their municipal rate is, mm -hmm. we might be able to get a discount on the tickets. And then if we have extra tickets, say from Can or not Can but Fun Town Splashdown, was the one I was thinking of. Um, if we have extra ones, maybe we can sell them here at the town. That's what Barrington does. Is they have some through their rec department. It's like a discounted price, like five dollars off. You Too of the library and museum passes mm -hmm. that they have because they've got discounts on the C mm -hmm. museum or the Crystal Falls one, which I think would be cool. That would be a nice trip. We should yeah. maybe next year take advantage of that yeah. library um, tickets. I I will um, check on the credit card. That's so, yeah, that's that's card. The, I mean, just find out what we can do. Definitely for teen camp. Mm -hmm. We really need. 
something, yes. something in place for. I would say if we know up more up front, then in a later this year we would increase Caroline's limit and let her put it on her card and then accountability is on her. Right. Right. But it did always seem like there was like for water country and stuff that we had, it was you know that was big because we had ten out of the That was the same thing. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, speaking of trips, I have a question. Do you think that, so I know this is the second year that we've done state parks and we've done uh, the pool. Do you think we should, do you think that stuff is eventually going to start getting stale? Or should we that was on my list. It? Or what do you guys, and I know we don't have an answer right now. And again, a lot of this stuff is going to depend on the surveys that come back. But something we may or may not want to think about? I mean, it's uh, cheap. For us, time. I know the kids obviously enjoy the state parks. They really enjoy the pool. But I think that some of them are starting to, like, not want it. Like, I yeah, mean, we need water. Yeah, I know, we need water, but I, I think we need something else, too. I mean, every Monday going to the state park and every Friday going to the pool, like, they, they love it. But at the same time, we're starting to get kids that will hear a parent say, my kid is not going to be here Monday, or Monday and Tuesday. They'll be here Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, though. And that is, like, an everyday. But, anyway. So, and then I know we had also talked about, obviously this is, becomes an issue, but if we could do half-day field trips as well, so like on a Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, if we can do like something in the afternoon, I know that we have morning obligations, but mixing it up a little bit. You're just increasing the cost of the afternoon events. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, it just, it's a lot of money. Mm -hmm. It's what, 225? <laughs> It's like one twenty five for the half day. Okay. But that's going to like Dover. Mm-hmm. Because mm -hmm. you're paying the driver by the hour. Yeah. I'm not so saying it's the hospital, I'm just saying it's just White Lake was four hundred and thirty nine dollars. They were too low for Yeah, but White Lake is that's far mm -hmm. that's two an hours hour. on the bus. Mm -hmm. An hour and a half. Yeah. Uh, so an hour up oh my goodness. An hour and a half up and an hour and a half down. Yeah. 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 That's three hours and then you then you sit in there and you're paying them. Yeah. I'm not saying don't go. I'm just saying that that's you know to having more trips during the week is right. Was team in your set? Yes. Okay. What was? Do you have the bus for that? Uh, no. The last bus invoice was uh, early August. Wait, hold on. Oh no, end of July. So for the pool it was one twenty eight. Okay. For the pool. I have two thoughts mm -hmm. on your half day trips versus full day trips. Is that if we can come up with money in our budget or consider fundraising for going to the Wetland Pass. We wrote two grants to go there this year. You could walk down there and back. Well, we have parents that won't sign off on allowing their kid to do off-campus walks. So How many kids did you have for that? Um, maybe just a handful. Yeah. But then it's, we have to have one of our counselors stay, stay back. back. And yeah. then we lose a counselor and then we're losing eyes and that's that's why we didn't do, end up doing the library this year. I mean, granted, all, some of our kids also were not the nicest in the library and left the library a mess a lot, but we didn't end up doing the library this year because we couldn't, we couldn't walk. So uh, my thought was to, on those half days that you wanted to break up, if you do something like that, you could also bring people in. I mean, is there, could you talk to the librarian and see if she'll come in and bring some books? Some books or an activity to do right. into the camp, um, or um, the other thing is, could you utilize some of the library passes on like the rainy days when you didn't have a chance to go to um, the state, park. state parks? If you know it's going to rain a couple days ahead of time, or you can email the librarian and say. Um, could we have the pass to go to such and such a place? Mm -hmm. But I don't know if the library passes will cover such an issue. Yeah. Did you guys have like a, like real schedules for the week? I mean, did you have like printouts of schedules of what was going to be happening for the week? We did. Okay. Do, is that something that's in the books that you guys gave me? I just wanted to take a look at them and just get a feel for how the activities are. Directors binder. Okay. I mean, again, we didn't always follow it because we found that breaking the kids off into counselor groups worked a lot better yeah. rather than like age groups. So it wasn't always followed, but I mean there is a there is a schedule in there, I believe. Okay. I just want to 
kind of this is not my age or anything, but it's just only like five kids in my age with just the one dash week. So there's like I know there's just a lot of kids and I know there's just a lot of stories. And it's like just how much is the site like is it Do you mean having like gut us? Yeah. I think that that for us I mean, I know that we had intentions of doing a cutoff, but it it got to be a lot with not doing a cutoff. I mean, we had people registering in the middle of the summer. Granted, it was like only a couple of weeks, but it it was a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot. Well, the problem too with the cutoff, I think. How many how many kids did did that one bus did the bus take like seventy five? Like plus counselors. Yeah, with right. counselors. That's yeah. with counselors. So yeah. we'd be cutting off at sixty five kids. So uh, I thought not last year, the year before I thought it was like oh with counselors. It might I, it, it's, it's either like no it's either seventy five or eighty three. I can't remember what it is. There's a But I know we did a like a whole summer rate, and then we did like week rates. But what if we just had parents sign up by week, so that way we know what weeks your kids are not going to be there, and we can plan better accordingly with like bus schedules. But so that's the direction we wanted to head. Okay. It, it, last year, that was the intention, but then we realized that people who are paying for full summer, it's were not really going to be there the full summer, so that's when I think it was Jody who actually tried to find out who was going to do what. But I, so I think we're heading in that direction where okay. we need to get a better grip on how many kids are actually going to be there yeah. that week. Um, and that way, because we're I, not sending off a bus Monday morning being like, "Hey, we only have sixty kids. I don't need your second bus." Yeah, yeah. Because so. I think we did that a handful of times. That's where they get mad at us. Yes. Yeah. So there's got to be a there has to be a better way to handle yeah. this. Well, and I think what we, we had talked about, too, was when last year when we had trips on Tuesday, there was a there was at least, you know, the people who rolled in on Monday could say, Hey, my kid's not going to be there tomorrow. Right. So that was, that was a problem with just having the field trip on Monday, that there wasn't a way to say, you know, or we had, we had 50 kids showing up on Monday, so, you know. I think the year before... We may, the Mandy was, I think we may have had a, we were heading in that direction, we were heading in a better direction because we were telling, we wanted the $5 for the, the right. district. So I think we had, mm. even like that money before, we had a better grip right. on. I'm not saying we necessarily need to move in that direction, but I just think there's a, there's a better way to handle it. Or to maybe, or out. maybe we could even find out, like, I don't know, is there a way to send something out on a Friday that says, you know, I, yeah, but, uh, but then you have people who don't answer, right? So there's always, there's always somebody that's not going to tell you that they're coming. Well, coming. you know, <laughs> there's other people around us who run great camps. Maybe we can reach out again to the Barrington um, director and, and find out how she works. Her. Yeah, that. yeah her, bu- her busing. I think because I know camp, I know anyways. camp cool. They they limit their kids like 52 kids every year. They don't they charge a lot more than we do. <laughs> <laughs> and in South Warwick, it's by the day at Clubhouse Kids. And you can choose to send your kids. I think their field trips are Tuesday. But you can send your kids. It's $45 for the day. And to be, to go to like, um, there were a couple of them that were $45. Legoland in Boston was $45 for the day. And that included your bus and your counselor and everything you needed. And then if they were on campus, it would be between 20, or at the school, central school, it was 25 to $30. So that $15 covered a lot. Oh, like your bus fee and everything, and the parking and stuff like that. So they broke it down by day, and it came out to be roughly every week, 175 to $210. And you could sign up for the whole summer. Or you could sign up by the week, or you could sign up by the day, um, and you could break it down. So you could, I could have thought about sending my son just to go to Legoland. I'm like, what about he's going to Legoland? I want to go with him. Right, right, right. So I that would be hard to have. Make sure you have enough uh, 
student to counselor ratio, wouldn't it? We did it by the day. Well, How would you control when, that? When would you have to sign up for that, though, by? You're not saying Monday you, you decide you're not going to go, up. you're going to go on Wednesday or something. Your you registration was all due, I believe, you had June to have 1st, that so that's in advance. Um, okay, so then there's no changing? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, because who knows what they're going to do, right. you know, July what and August. Uh, Clubhouse kids. Yeah. yeah, there's no change. I, there's a family that went a couple summers ago, and um, but then now they live here, and they she actually brought up the point to me that they plan their trips out like months in advance. Mm -hmm. They don't change them. They mm -hmm. go where they're going, and that's how it is. But then again, if you sign up by the day, like it's months in advance, or not months, it's a month in advance, so you know exactly. And so if you don't go, though, you lose out, you pay, but you don't, you, mm -hmm. you don't get some money back. It yeah, is right. what it is. And you can't add someone on there because mm -hmm. you don't know. It is, because you have to know what your counselor yeah. to student is. Yeah. 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 But I did have a talk with somebody here in Wellensburg that sent two of their kids to camp, um, clubhouse kids, because they accept them at age five. And her daughter just turned five, like, a week before the camp started. So she paid out so that she could send her two kids there together. And then, because uh, we ha have these entering first grade in Southern Valley. Mm -hmm. so. mm -hmm. I like mm -hmm. I, I <laughs> <laughs> Thing going off of 
was to sign up midsummer. She would rather them do it with the team director rather than through the town hall. I don't know. I'm not her, so I don't know what she really meant by this, but I think that to figure out, like, again, scheduling, like how many kids she would have per week and then like, she can decide on um, field trips and stuff like that. Only because the school extension stuff, so it was done mm -hmm. on an individual basis and being here, is that what happened? Um, on team camp? This, uh, yeah, we had a cutoff. We right? had a cutoff right? sports and then, right? So, yeah, but yeah. team camp was let right. go longer. Continued, right? Yeah. So, so, she went, she so you're saying they came in here and signed up yeah. and then, then they didn't notify her? Right. Okay. So, so she, right she, she was saying that if you, I mean, I think with a kid signing up in the middle of the summer, mm -hmm. awesome. Mm -hmm. But she would prefer it go through her so that she can be notified and be, be aware of like who it is and what's going on when they're coming and stuff like that. Especially in the middle of the summer because she's already <coughs> like got her group of kids. Yep. So okay. Well hopefully it got her reputation now mm -hmm. of being a success and we wouldn't have to extend it right. after the right. deadline. I think we and did that the same just to deadline grab other as Raleigh. Yep. And then we wouldn't have that. Issue and that's what I hope we'll be able to do. It was the first year, so right. it was a you know, we and we were able to kind of like running, control you know. it because it was low numbers mm -hmm. and keep it open. Right. So let's hope that we don't have to do that. But I'll talk to Caroline about that. I'll and I, that that. Yeah. I was under the impression that if they signed up after Camp Raleigh closed, they had to do it on sports engine. So you guys should have gotten notice quite quickly. Oh, the sports engine was extended to take it per team until July 25th. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Cool. So I don't know if we got notices saying that. I'm or someone got added. Then all right. of a sudden someone shows up and you don't know who they are. Right. Is your point, right? Yeah. I don't know if it was like an email saying, hey, so and so just registered for blah, blah, blah. Because the weeks that we were low were the following couple of weeks towards the end of the summer. I think it was five, six, and seven. Whatever week we went to um, town, town was like we almost canceled our week. Yeah, turned out to be fine. Yeah. It jumped. I think that was the week after the deadline. But I can keep it in. So maybe maybe that's just a part of our whole communication thing mm -hmm. that we are continually working on to better, you know, mm -hmm. ourselves and that how. How can we get the information that we have to the right people? Like, how does it funnel, you know? Right. Yeah, I think that's part of, um, you know, you and I and Andrew Lewis have talked about getting together a manual or a handbook or something internally to, so that we have reference for core communication. Yeah. Who does what? Because mm -hmm. yeah. I know what, even with Brittany, is, she was really upfront about it. It's an opportunity. Going along with that as well, um, Katie mentioned about having her or the team director doing, like, doing the field trips rather than having. I mean, I know that we did it because Brittany was like the director of both team, team um, camps, but having the team director do the keep, do the um, calling of places and figuring out field trips and stuff like that, just so that she was more involved with it. I think that's fantastic. Yeah. I, I I think you know that definitely. Director umbrella should be able to say, "This is yours." Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> this course. is yours. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I, I think I completely agree with that. Yeah, I don't think that the that Whitney's position needs to be over both. I think that well, we just we had it over both in that um, almost like she had somebody to go to if she needed help. So it was but yeah. she certainly they should certainly could go to her, but it wouldn't be okay. like she has to be making those plans. And stuff. Yeah, right, right. So I think she, right. the team camp director should definitely Make working with this group yes. of yeah. the yeah. committee yeah. as well. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, should be doing her own yeah. planning. I think it got it confusing a couple of times because, I mean, some of those invoices were sent to Brittany and Katie was not aware of that. And mm -hmm. then it yeah. just got jumbled and confused. And so that's, I think, again, why he asked to do, or asked, I mean, to put that on our points. Yeah, yeah no, that's totally.
totally understandable. And, and again, this is the first year, so we're learning right. from our mistakes. Yeah, and, definitely. You know. um, Brittany's uh, right now working on uh, roles, the responsibilities that she had. Mm -hmm. um, I gave her what we consider a shell, and she's just kind of populated with what she did. Mm -hmm. So that might actually help further define the team. Mm -hmm. right? He or she goes out and trains them all, or do we like like send a letter in March and find out prices and see what works in our budget and tell her to pick? Oh know, well, we certainly need to work together. I mean, I think that she should. I think she should have a meeting with maybe different nights, but a meeting with the, the team and a meeting with the mm -hmm. um, Raleigh and say, okay, what is what is it you want to do? What is mm -hmm. it? Where do you want to go? Yeah, because we clearly need to work. Yeah. Finances and yeah. Time to and then it. we can work together and, and get delegate some that they can do I don't think and we can do. I think coming up with a list is a great idea, but I think have giving her the option of like, okay, I mean, and she knows now too, like if any of the field trips were not good, like was this not a good idea because mm -hmm. you had these kids or was it a good idea because you had these kids? Mm -hmm. I think that giving her the option of choosing or picking and choosing is mm -hmm. better yeah. for her. Because yeah. I think last year, um, when we had our previous director, we were much more hands-on on planning the schedule. And this, for Camp Raleigh, this year we were more hands-off. Mm -hmm. And so I see that maybe we follow that trend for and so team camp. We didn't bring her here tonight, too. We probably should have. Kate, she, yeah. she's working. Okay. She wasn't, I asked her. She was unable to make it. Oh, okay. Because it would have been nice to mm -hmm. hear from some of her Well, that's why she asked me to put some of the points on, because she was unable to come. Okay. Yeah. I, don't, I mean, to your um, to your comments, so yeah, I like being hands off. As far as that's concerned, I also like to be hands on too. As far <laughs> as knowing, uh, this could be a good balance because we all got into this because we have a vision for the camp, and we just want to make sure that it's it goes the way that we we think it you know, should go, mm -hmm. as well as get because they're the director of the system, they get expertise in certain areas that we don't. Because I would like to see us put it out there, um, like we did this year, of what's going to happen at the camp, so people know what we to sign that kids up, so like they know like they're going to camp be late, yeah. and they want those activities. But I also don't want to tie somebody into certain activities. Yeah, and I want them to choose what activities they're going to do when. But that's what I say. Conversations early, yeah. early start. You know, mm -hmm. beginning of the year, we even start talking. To where do you want to go? What do you want to do? And absolutely, once you get it all straightened out, then you're going to put a plan on so the parents know where they're going every day or, or what they're going to do in there um, when it starts. So, but definitely, they need to have input because they're the only ones that know what worked and what didn't work. Yeah. So. And on the Raleigh side, I like the doing um, the field trips with the team on Friday mm -hmm. because a lot of our, our Raleigh campers love hanging out with them mm -hmm. and like looking that's good to hear. It's something that went well. Yeah. Um, I mean, our last week of camp, a lot of our campers came up to us and said, when are the team camp going to come? When are we going to oh, see them? So I think they were very excited to know that they were only a seven-week program. Yeah. Um, but just to put that out there. Well, that's a thought, too, for next year. Like, do we want to make that this, you know, an eight-week program? What else, you know? Well, what do you think? see them every day, so, mm -hmm. yeah, it's, like, really cool. And, and then we had, we had a, a couple eight of weeks, team yes. campers that were on the older spectrum, too, and they were more than willing to, like, help out. Mm -hmm. Like, they see a kid, and sometimes, like, that's what happened. We saw, they saw a kid that was struggling or not getting involved, and they went over and helped. So, to know that they're there, not just to be watched by us, but mm -hmm. to also want to get kids engaged was really nice. Yeah, great. That's good. It's good to go. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
think, you know, I, I talked to Katie a little bit too, and she thought five days. I, I think the three days was perfect yeah. for my kids. And, like, I said, it would be so little. expensive if we went to five exactly. days trips every day. Right. And, and even I mean, my kids, you know, on the days that they didn't, didn't go. I mean, they were my typical teenagers. They slept until like eleven. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> and the little ones that, weren't there to wake right, them. To wake them up. Right? I think it gives that perfect balance of all right. You guys need to do a couple of days in the week, but yeah. then also our teenagers can relax for those couple of right. days a week as well. So, right. so I guess the, <laughs> I like the three days. I, yeah. I guess I the elephant in the room is are we <laughs> our team we camp for next year continuing? Is that something that we yeah. need to? Discuss all the students to see what we have. But I'm not uh, a team camp for next year. Why wouldn't you? Yeah. Okay. I yeah. didn't hear anything. <laughs> well, I don't, I don't, I haven't heard anything negative about team camp. Okay. Like, we good. not continue it. Well, I don't, well, because it's, we just have to, we just have to <laughs> just stay on top and of the money. fix what yeah. we, mm -hmm. yeah. and, you know, what didn't quite right. go right or was it kind of, you know, it's mostly the transportation costs, you know, or, but if we're hooking on with Raleigh on Fridays, that's mm -hmm. taking care of that, that part of it. I, really I just really, in my heart, feel like, I just feel like um, we have, we gained really good momentum with it. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I think it's a good idea. I, what I do think we need to do is, like we've been talking about, it's been the theme throughout this whole two hours, is we need to get ahead of what we need to do in the spring. Yeah. With the yes. Planning and get ahead of the fundraising mm -hmm. and get ahead of this, that, and the other mm -hmm. thing. Mm -hmm. I think if we do that, mm -hmm. we, you know, we're not going to have at least a quarter of the issues that we've had. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that we were asking. Yeah. 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 No, I don't see why we wouldn't. Uh, I don't know. Well, I ran quick numbers today, and I know Celia and I were always a little off, but I had a second plus for teen camp, about two for an hour. Did you know? Yeah. I got about 1,700. Yeah. Just, was that the movie day? No, that was further down. That was uh, they might have, that might have been the day that they just hung out with us. 
Yeah, they were supposed to go. You were supposed to go to Alcoya State Park week five, and they went to City Theater. And it came out to be a hundred and one dollars for the camp. So maybe maybe they wish that that was the day. Yeah. 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 So, so yeah. Um, and you're taking three buses, right? From us, still, or do you want to wait until you get to Fallon Harbors? We can take three buses, maybe more, or. You can just give me the extra and I'll put it in <laughs> the budget. Whatever you guys have left over, I'll put it in as income. Yeah. Oh. But. You need to come on bus and go to us. Yeah. 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 Get and those will come to my home mailing. Um, <laughs> I had home from vacation and I had this big envelope of all the bus invoices and I was like, huh, what is this doing here? <laughs> so let me know how much you have left over. So instead of like, 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 like oops. Okay. Because then uh, I can use that as But I need your help looking at invoices for a couple of just to confirm okay. that I have that. Where's Raleigh sit right now? Um, I don't even know. I just barely, I got these, but we were $2,000 off. Basically. Hey, that's not bad. The last time I said you were on update, we were 2000 off or we are in debt 2000 In debt 2000 but that was, that's it. yeah, we were just, that was projection, though. Um, oh, because last I knew it was four. Yeah, that was projection. It's, it's that was projection, mm -hmm. four? Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't know. I mean, I've got, I've got this, and I saw more invoices coming in. Okay. Um, I'm not even going to truly know until end of August, at the least. Okay. It depends when all these invoices well, come in. I have a better... a lot of things that we realized in the, in the beginning that, um, well, as we dived into it, we realized the way we budgeted was not accurate. We should have done things differently, which is going to help us next year, right? Um, the way we're going to have to go up a little yeah. bit, I think, on the tuition. So we're going to have to go up that See, much. See, that's, I mean, I brought up at the beginning of the meeting that a parent came up to us on the last day and tried to hand us money, but he, that parent was saying that we are one of the cheapest camps around. We are. And so, sure. <laughs> maybe, I don't know, this is through my own eyes, but if we were to bump up that tuition a little bit, mm -hmm. would it help, could it help out with our, our debt? Yeah, yeah. well, sure. But what's, I think, what's, yeah, what's going to be important is if we, we have to break <sighs> everything down, how, so how much should we really charge within our tuition rate for buses, and how much should we actually pay out for buses? We've got to do a lot of ticking and tying. Right. We have to budget season okay. in September yeah. before we can even answer how much in tuition we should go up, right. if anything. Right. Yeah. Um, we'll just yeah, look at what we did wrong. We're going to keep we'll it as right. low as we can, but we yeah. also cannot, we have to keep it you know, neutral as much as possible. Yeah, so we right. do not want to price ourselves out. But yeah, we, we need to go up. I, mean, I know we increased the time for pre and post care. Mm -hmm. Can we see if we can increase the price? Maybe not by much, but maybe like $5 a week, since we've added a half an hour to the beginning from last year and we didn't at the end of the day, it's like we still kept we kept the price yeah. low. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's so yeah. Draws we'll look at all of it. We'll look at all of it and we'll see. You know, because if we can figure out, you know, how much it cost, we'll have to figure out how much it costs to do pre and post, and then divide that by the amount of students. So we'll we'll um, and we'll look at everything. We'll just we'll keep it as reasonable as possible, but we do have to try to make sure we're neutral. I just think that we've learned a lot about. in the past two years, and I think this coming budget season will be a lot smarter about mm -hmm. how we put it together. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, going off the pre and post, I know that we talked about like doing a cutoff, but can we also do a cutoff of like how many kids we can have for pre and post? Yeah, let me try. <laughs> let me try that. I just that we kept changing. There were quite a few times where we had to call in a counselor and be like, "Hey, I need you to come in this morning." Did you, um, okay, so that's a good question. Did you guys end up letting any counselors go this year? Because remember last year we were letting them go because the numbers were dwindling. Did you, did that happen at all? Was she like sending them home? We couldn't. Or? Okay. We were, I mean, as it is some of the days, we probably could have used a couple of extra counselors. So. Okay. Uh, I think there might have been one day where we were over, but it was a field trip day, so we said, you know, we'll we'll keep it because better to have extra eyes on a field trip day rather than not, so. 
So you want to take a look at uh, definitely capping it. Because I know we kept taking the Oh, tape. we're trying to, we're trying to not have our <laughs> shortest, so we're trying to do that. Yeah. You have to. Okay. What, so let me ask you this, Janessa. If you could have capped it, what would ideally? Well, I think that it also depends on if, I mean, I know in our ratio, we said one counselor to what, six kids or something like Depending that? Depending on the age group. So yeah. Like one age so I think that, six. I mean, it was between what, one and six, one and ten. So we usually, we try to have two, maybe three counselors open each day. But with adding on the time, it got very difficult with scheduling purposes because we had to make sure that no counselors were going over. And then we had quite a few counselors that weren't coming in until like 1130 during the day because we were, didn't want them going over in time. So, I mean, in a perfect world, yeah, I would say no more than 30. More than 30 what? Pre. Pre, pre kids. Oh, right. that's where we okay. had yeah, most. Computer, most of them were pre. Most okay. of them were pre. Right. Okay. Most of them were pre. Okay. And then, I mean, and on, in a perfect day, not every single one of them were there either. Right. But there were some weeks where we were very high with numbers and we had so many kids there. So. Do you remember what the total was of pre that had signed up? Oh, I don't remember. Do you, do you remember what? I don't know. It was between 40 and 50, I believe. Wow. Should we there was a lot. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Should we have just a counselor just for pre? And that's say leave after that? Or, I mean, or pre or post? I mean, I also right? wondered um, um, if they could use, the, like, this year I had it in my budget. She was there for seven, so could you, eight hours, I budgeted her for like 25 hours a week. Mm -hmm. So that's three eight hour days plus an extra hour, whatever. Mm -hmm. Wondering if you could pull her in to help too on some of those days that I mean, you. Not, not really her kids, kids were there were for though, free. Right. So that was, I mean, I'm sure that we probably So we'll put that on the list then. Um, yeah, thank you to thank take you a look at. The only thing that's hard about, and and I get like, because I know we wanted to cap it at one mm -hmm. point in time. The only thing that then that kind of can create is if people really have to have it, then right. are they going, to going elsewhere? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Right. But then, that's I mean, it, if for some reason we do need, like, if we have that. So then maybe, you know, so maybe then we have morning only. Like, I, I, I spoke, when I spoke with Brittany after you had left, I asked her about, um, she didn't she didn't think that the whole part-time counselor worked very well it for you guys. It did not work at all. No, so she, the suggestion was not to have part-time people. If we could have, like, full-time people for all summer long, I mean, granted, myself and a couple of other people, we did take a, like a week vacation and that was hard for the people that were left at camp. But the part times just came, like it was too much, trying to figure out their schedule along with our schedule and trying to figure out, okay, what day can you be here? And for some of them, they had to leave early some days and then that turned into, okay, well then we don't have eyes at the pool. So, right. so why did we go part time? I think we wanted to use that as like a fill, more more as a fill in. So they didn't have standard hours in their mm -hmm. right. Time. No. So like on call type of thing. Right. And, and we have not even that. I mean, that. they by the beginning of the summer they did have a set schedule. Like mm -hmm. week one, you were here Monday, Wednesday, Thursday. Mm -hmm. Week two, you were here Monday, Wednesday, Tuesday, Thursday. So it actually so. was more their schedule yeah, as opposed exactly. to our schedule. And I mean, if we, could have a, right. if we could have a part-time person that could work with our schedule yes. rather than us working with their schedule, maybe it would be a different, but we were working with their schedule. Why right. were we working with their schedule and not what we So the part-time part person yeah. we had was a baseball player right. okay. and constantly traveling. So yeah. there were Mondays that he couldn't be here, Fridays that he couldn't be here. So, so but then there were also... Very complicated. Yeah. And then there were also two weeks during the summer that he couldn't work at all. Mm -hmm. So it was like, he was very, like, part-time. Yeah. And then but there was, like, one week that he 
worked one day. Mm -hmm. So I would say with a part-time person, they could be Monday through Friday mornings, mm -hmm. and the part-time could be Monday through Friday afternoons. Right. You could definitely deal with that because you know when mm -hmm. they're going to be there yeah. up front. You know, yeah, so if you had someone who couldn't do mm -hmm. a five days all day, mm -hmm. but they could do part time, we could have one. Mm -hmm. We hire based on that. Yeah, this is what you we know, you have, but yeah. versus on call and calling them or, yeah. or and not having a firm schedule and yeah. I think ideal for us it would be full time if they could, but I do like the idea of morning slash afternoon. Yeah, yeah. Because that's when we need them the most is like the either opening or closing. Yeah. And then in the afternoon can be your post care. Yeah. You know, and so yeah. that that could possibly be okay. Right. Just not Monday, Thursday, yeah. Friday. Right. That's yeah. Just yeah. That kind of yeah. Thing. yeah. It didn't work. Yeah. Didn't work. Okay, that, that makes sense. Okay. My understanding too was from when we first started this is that the part time employees were only like ten hours a week and they covered two hours a day for either mornings, afternoons or lunch. It's hard to have so much to commit to that, especially if you have a younger uh, counselor yeah. with family obligations. I think that that's just, yeah. Because the other thing is, I mean, we have to talk about vacations, and at some time, but vacations are disruptive for the program itself, too, mm -hmm. because you, then you've got to scramble to get someone into a position um, if that person's out. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know. Does this you, you're mandated to be there, available for all seven or eight weeks? Mm -hmm. um, they don't review your application, mm -hmm. but they won't even call you in for an interview because they won't even oh, wait. Did we have like a final year application that we could uh, review that maybe? <laughs>
So yeah. it was, we're taking a counselor away from the kids, mm-hmm. and then, so yeah, I mean, it turns into a long process. I still think if we call the woman in Barrington and have her explain her and how she process and how she handles mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or even yeah. someone's work there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's something we can work on, too. I don't think any calls does that at all. Snacks? No. I don't think so either. No, very. Well, let's check with her and yeah. see. I know you have a name. Yeah. Her name, right? Let's check with her and see. It's a little in here for account, but it's still. Mm-hmm. It's a good cash yeah. element. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I definitely would like to maintain it. Try to find some. I would love to be able to do it twice a day, like once snack in the morning and then snack in the afternoon. It's just. Then I just would want to do it depending on just the view of that. Do that. That's a good idea. Yep. With the, just you know, having a volunteer for snack. Genius, something. Oh, sign of genius. Sign of genius. We oh, oh, yeah. Do that, genius, and, genius. and they can pick their day and their time that they can be there. And right. Um, yeah. And if you have parents like myself who has kids in camp, mm-hmm. I can pick a couple of days. Or mm-hmm. kids, parents who have all of their kids in camp rolling, maybe they don't have anything going on. We're mm-hmm. yeah, right at home sitting in the pool. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> they're not even there. Um, you know how we solicited all the parents or community members to come in and do a little song and dance? Yeah, we whatever happened to that? We mm-hmm. should do more of that, too. Yeah. I think we talked about that last year, and we had, um, we, what we had was community volunteers who had a skill set or mm-hmm. something to come in and teach. Yeah. Go back to some of our original oh, ideas. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. programs. Yeah. yeah. With the means to do that, oh my God.
would you rate your child's experience? It was a one to five. Mm -hmm. And I was, yeah, so I thought that one was still good. Um, how was the Camp Raleigh staff, i.e., do you feel they were engaged, interactive, blah, blah, blah? Mm -hmm. Still can answer the question. Mm -hmm. Number five, did you find the newly offered pre and post camp hours useful? That's not applicable. We extended it, though. Yeah, it and is applicable. So, which is yeah, a good point because yeah. as we're talking about capping it, we got a tremendous amount of pre and post, which means it's needed. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. so, Absolutely. I, I say keep that question. Keep that one. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, number six, what did you think of the cost? So I think I just went through, what did you think of the tuition structure or rate structure or something like that? Still think it's an applicable question. Yes. Yeah. I'm hoping they're going to say very, very reasonable because right. that's so. extremely was. But if right. they have a lot of them saying very expensive, and like, okay, we need to search somewhere else. else. <laughs> there was nobody the year before that said it was too expensive. There were three buckets. The overwhelming majority was just right and good, good experience. And some people said almost 30% said it was too cheap, I'd pay more. <laughs> right? I have a feeling we'll get quite a few of those. Uh, number seven, what types of activities would your child participate in if they were offered? Which was actually a good question. It was more of a common question because we did get a lot of, we'd like to see arts and crafts come home. We got a lot of good ideas mm -hmm. from parents. So did we get yeah. that one? Mm -hmm. Okay. Number eight, please share more of your overall experience with us this summer, both positive and negative. We did get some good feedback because mm -hmm. I still think it's important to offer that question. Yep. So feel free to mm -hmm. offer. Field trips and bed pizza <laughs> from the year before. That's good. Um, last one was, would you recommend Camp Raleigh to other families? Which is great because it was 80%. 78% said absolutely. And the one who's, I, I just, just to know, the one person who was actually 5% returned this year. She said no. She would never come back ever, ever, ever again. Hmm. She returned this year. That's the funny just so you know. <laughs> yeah. I want you guys to know that. Yeah. I think those are all great. I don't think yeah, we need no, to change anything. Because I, I think you must have had some new people. Yeah. I mean, okay. sure. Okay. Absolutely. So I would definitely keep it the same. So I'll get that out this week. And then we also nice. say good to my So my well, still fresh. Mm -hmm. I have one quick question. Do you think the grant money is applied to the grants we give it? Yes. Yes. I think you earlier. should ask yourself that question. <laughs> so, yeah. You should ask Because so, <laughs> it was a lot Start of work sooner. that you did. Start yeah. sooner. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. then you know what you have way before the program. Yeah. But I and you know, I think you I think you did an amazing job. Yeah, yeah. So the recommendation and the you might want to put the on the on your timeline is to yep. do the grants mm -hmm. in the winter so we have them um, for they, they do them quarterly a lot of the places, so to do them in the winter so that come um, May, April and May, we're hearing back. Yes. So we know for June whether or not they're coming back. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I would definitely, I would definitely even start submitting them like in February, you know, right after, because most of them will get their, their new funds for the first of the year. Right. You know, so I would definitely just work on them in the winter and then or as soon as it opens, so you can have your ideas of who they are and then for them. Did we yeah. hear back from all of the ones that you actually applied to? No. Because like, what about you know, Dix? Dix? Really? Like, did well, we Dix did not hear back from Dix? That's Dix was your donation was those good part, those little coupons. That's I yeah. swear I think that's what their donation was to you. Huh. Oh, I, can, I can reach out to Dix because they were the last one. Was six to eight weeks. The we heard back from one negative yeah. because their funding had run out and they mm -hmm. said it was a good program. Mm -hmm. um, we heard back from the one that gave us two thirds of our money yeah. and that's what we used for the STEM. Mm -hmm. Then we, oh, I, the third one was a new bank that moved into Dover and they said it would be a long shot for us anyway. Hopscotch, is it up to Yeah. So they said they usually, it would be a long shot for us anyway and they never responded. 
responded, and they said they would let us know by June 15th. Yeah. So my guess is that. I, I'm going to say for the first year, though, I mean, we did really well. Um, we did. Yeah. yeah. So but there's, you know, there's a lot out there. So. Yeah, I started creating a list and yeah. got, like, five or ten names into it. It's like, i got to stop now. Mm -hmm. So I was going to tell you, there's free courses out there in the community that offer grant writing. I was going to look into your names, too. Yes, I'm just looking at you. Yeah, that's just what I wanted to. And, <coughs> and we can find volunteers to help grant writing, too. Yeah, yeah. Um, the uh, Dover, uh, about learning or whatever, they may have one. I mean, it would be really cheap. Even they will be expensive, won't it? Okay. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, my husband said he saw one um, like four months ago or so. That there was a free grant writing course mm -hmm. somewhere. I couldn't recall where, but mm -hmm. they're out there. Mm -hmm. So we should look into one. Mm -hmm. And get you some help. The other thing I thought of, too, is when it comes to time for donations and sending out all our letters, we, I know my kids are looking for volunteer hours to uh, for their high school or middle school uh, transcripts. So. <laughs> well, we're looking for some for family day, so if they're interested, I, I put it out there for a high school kid. But what day is that? September. Okay. And we're looking for the, the kids to do, um, and I said for them to do for their um, high school um, well, volunteer stuff. But we're looking at for them to um, organize and run some relay races and stuff like that. that they so, we have extra grant funding.
get the budget kind of so you know what you can do for your timeline so the clerk doesn't have any budget to go. Well, we have to introduce what we propose for the budget mm -hmm. to the committee. Mm -hmm. So maybe October is a good yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we work that project. Is Tuesday still a good day for her? Yeah. Is that a better day? Yes, that's better. If we do October 16th, I believe my volleyball season is over. <laughs> I don't have anything right now, October 16th.